I can't forgive him. I can still remember the fierce look in my son's eyes when he said that. His gaze, filled with anger and hatred, was directed at a couple walking closely together, completely unaware of our presence. What's going on? I was stunned by the scene. I was in the back seat of a car. As I walked along the sidewalk, a car suddenly pulled up and I was dragged inside. The fear paralyzed me, leaving me speechless. But the one who pulled me in was my own son, Ryan. In the driver's seat was a strange man, glaring at me with a terrifying expression. My son, trembling with rage, and the intimidating man in the driver's seat were both staring at the couple. What was the relationship between these four people? Completely unable to grasp the situation, I didn't know whom to trust and could only let time pass by. Once the couple was out of sight, my son revealed a horrifying secret I could never have imagined. My name is Scarlett. I married my husband, a salesman at my former company, and left my job after becoming pregnant. Now, I support my family as a full-time housewife. My husband, Daniel, is a kind-hearted man, well-respected by his co-workers. He's always busy at work, often helping his co-workers and subordinates, and putting others before himself. Because of this, he comes home late and frequently leaves early on weekends for work. Despite this, he never complains and works diligently for us. I am very grateful for his dedication. Although he hasn't been promoted yet and doesn't earn a high salary, we recently bought our dream house. It's a used house, but it's much more spacious and comfortable than our previous rental apartment. Our son, Ryan, takes after his father, being a well-behaved, gentle, and kind child since he was young. This spring, he started high school and is enthusiastically involved in his studies and extracurricular activities. Recently, he started a part-time job to manage his own finances, taking steps toward both mental and financial independence. We are an ideal family that our neighbors envy, and I am content with our life. However, dark clouds began to loom over our happy life suddenly. It brought a fierce storm that would destroy our peaceful existence, attacking us without mercy. It all started with a sudden change in my son. Shut up! Don't touch me so familiarly! My once calm son suddenly began treating my husband coldly one day. Don't act all high and mighty. You disgust me. My husband, who still came home late and had little time at home, tried his best to talk to Ryan more. But Ryan trampled on those efforts, repeatedly speaking harshly to him. We were troubled by the change in our good boy, but we told ourselves it was probably a late rebellious phase and decided not to scold him much, just to observe. The new high school life and the part-time job he started a few months ago likely added stress, contributing to the change. Every parent experiences their child's rebellious phase. It will end eventually. He is no longer a little boy who depends on his parents. Who do you think you are? Just because you work doesn't make you superior. Don't come home anymore, you worthless jerk. But my son's abusive language escalated day by day. My husband remained silent. Finally, I couldn't stand watching the two of them anymore. Enough. Who do you think you're talking to? Your father works hard to support this family. Your part-time job is nothing compared to his work. Only talk big when you can earn enough to support a family. And besides, I didn't know what had happened to my son, but his attitude was unbearable. This house was bought by your father. If anyone should leave, it should be you. Normally, it would be my role to calm my son down and have a serious talk with him. But at that moment, I had no patience left and could only scold him. Suddenly, my son fell silent and glared at me with a look I had never seen before. I can leave this house anytime. 
Mom, you don't understand anything about people's feelings. With that, my son stormed into his room. The sound of the door slamming echoed through our quiet house. My husband and I were left speechless, standing there for a while. After that, my son's hostility toward us grew worse, and he finally refused to even see us. He claimed to be working late at his part-time job and returned home late every night. Despite living under the same roof, it felt like we were living separately. One day, the cash stored in a drawer at home was missing. It was the money my husband withdrew from the bank on payday every month, which I managed for our household expenses. The money was clearly reduced. There were no signs of a break-in, and the only suspect was my son. Was he lying about working late and spending time playing around? Or worse, was he involved with bad company? Overcome with anxiety, I decided to confront him. What? I don't know anything about that. Why would I steal money? He was probably guilty. As soon as I questioned him, he got angry. Enough. Even if you are my son, taking money from the house is the same as stealing. If your part-time job money isn't enough, explain why you need more and tell me properly. These days, every conversation turned into a fight. As parents of a rebellious teenager, we tried to accept it, but I couldn't forgive him for this. You've learned how hard it is to earn money, right? Stealing the money your father worked so hard to earn shows you don't understand his struggles at all. I'm ashamed of you. Suddenly, my son fell silent and glared at me with teary eyes. Why do you always suspect me? Don't you trust me at all? With those final words, my son left the house. I watched his back as he walked away and sighed deeply. He was probably going to his part-time job or out to have fun. Chasing after him would only result in him pushing me away, and he would come back home by morning. As expected, he didn't come home that night, and it wasn't until we were all asleep that I heard the sound of his footsteps quietly returning. Our conversations completely ceased, and the atmosphere at home only worsened. One day, there was a parent-teacher meeting at my son's high school, and I reluctantly went to the school. I expected to hear complaints about his rebellious behavior. However, his teacher sat across from me with a bright expression and praised him warmly. My son's grades were excellent, and he was popular among his classmates. He was trusted by many students and was even a candidate for next year's student council president. He was also diligently practicing with his club and contributing to the team's victories. The teacher's unexpected praise left me astonished. The teacher couldn't even imagine his behavior at home. With my mind blank, I felt relieved yet conflicted on my way home. My son's true self hadn't changed from before. His attitude at home was likely due to a combination of his rebellious phase and becoming independent. Eventually, children leave their parents' side. We shouldn't depend on our children forever. It was time for us to let go as well. With that in mind, I talked with my husband that night. We had been relying too much on our good boy as son. Maybe my son was forcing himself to be a good boy, and it exhausted him. Perhaps we demanded too much from him. Our own attitudes might have contributed to the problem. No matter how much we regret the past, we cannot go back. So, we decided to reflect on our past actions and face our son as an adult from now on. This was our conclusion. To avoid interfering too much with my son, I found a new hobby. I started attending a flower arrangement class twice a week, giving me a chance to get out. Since then, the arguments with my son decreased, and we began to spend our days more peacefully. When the time comes, my son will grow up and understand his parents' feelings. At that time, we will be able to connect on a deeper level. 
However, just a few weeks later, a sudden event turned our peaceful days upside down. As usual, I left the house and walked quickly to my flower arrangement class. The weather looked ominous, likely indicating a sudden rainstorm. Without an umbrella, I hurried toward the class, feeling the chilly air on my back. A low white car slowly approached and stopped quietly beside me. I stopped in my tracks, noticing the car. Suddenly, the rear door opened. A long arm reached out and grabbed my arm firmly. I was pulled into the car before I could resist. It hurt. Who was this? Fear paralyzed me, making it impossible to see my captor's face or cry for help. Where were they taking me? I glanced up and saw a stern-looking blonde man glaring at me from the driver's seat. Unable to call for help at the flower arrangement class, I felt trapped and hopeless. Mom, I'm sorry for scaring you. I didn't want to do this roughly, but we ran out of time. The voice next to me was my son, Ryan. Shocked and confused, I turned my head slowly toward the voice. Ryan? What are you doing? Weren't you supposed to be at work? Why are you doing this? My son grabbed my shoulders and looked at me intensely. Mom, I'm really sorry. Calm down. There's no time to explain, so just look out the window. Over there, at the corner. He pointed to a spot on the sidewalk across the street. Try not to be seen. Keep your head down a bit. I crouched down and looked where he was pointing. I saw a couple walking arm in arm, looking very close. What is that? At that moment, the sky darkened and heavy rain began to fall. The rain quickly turned everything white, and people hurried into buildings. The couple ran happily into the apartment building in front of us. Why is Daniel? The man who entered the apartment was unmistakably my husband. What is this? The woman with him was clearly much younger. I couldn't understand the situation and just stared out the window in shock. The rain pounded on the car roof loudly. Mom, I'm sorry for the confusion. We have been following those two for a while. The blonde man in the driver's seat was my son's co-worker. He was also the boyfriend of the young woman with my husband. The man politely apologized and introduced himself, showing a kind expression. My son then explained the whole story. In the quiet car, with only the sound of rain, I faced a shocking reality. From the beginning of his job, my son had been taken care of by this blonde co-worker. He taught my son diligently, treated him to meals, and even gave him rides home when he was tired. Their close ages brought them even closer, and they often confided in each other. One day, my son received a consultation from his senior at work. His senior suspected that his girlfriend was cheating on him. He had noticed suspicious, secretive text messages she was exchanging. While she was away, he took pictures of these messages as evidence and shared them with my son. My son was shocked when he saw the messages. He quickly opened his own phone to check his texts. The profile picture and name of the person in the messages were identical to the one on his phone. He and his senior exchanged horrified glances. The person she was messaging was my husband. No way! This can't be true! My son, who had trusted his father, insisted it was a mistake. To prove his father's innocence, he decided to follow him after work. Instead of heading home, my husband went to the apartment where the senior's girlfriend lived alone. Another day, my son secretly checked my husband's phone while he was in the shower. He found numerous messages from the girlfriend. The messages were too dirty to read aloud, ending with heart emojis. My son was disgusted by his father and couldn't interact with him sincerely anymore. He started avoiding his father, unable to accept him emotionally, and lashed out in anger. 
Struggling with his relationship with his father, he couldn't confide in me, who believed our family was harmonious. Reaching his limit, he and his senior decided to gather evidence of the affair. They staked out in front of the woman's apartment with a camera. That's when they saw me on my way to the flower arrangement class, leading to the current situation. I couldn't believe my husband was having an affair. I can't forgive him. My son couldn't contain his anger toward the father who deceived us and continued his infidelity. The car remained silent except for the sound of the rain. The rain sounded like it was expressing my son's intense anger. Ten minutes later, the heavy rain stopped, and the sun began to shine again. The sparkling raindrops and puddles on the road were beautiful, making the recent events feel surreal. But this was reality. I couldn't forgive my husband either. After taking numerous photos as evidence, we parted ways with the senior, and my son and I got out of the car. The senior apologized deeply for startling me before driving away. My husband, who seemed so gentle and family-oriented, was leading a double life. Meanwhile, the stern-looking, blonde young man was actually kind and caring toward his girlfriend. You shouldn't judge people by their appearances. I reflected deeply on the meaning of that phrase. Ryan, I'm sorry. You knew about this and couldn't tell me, carrying the burden alone. Your harshness toward your father was your only form of rebellion. I didn't notice and blamed you. It's terrible that I couldn't trust my own child. Feeling guilty for how much I must have hurt him, I couldn't lift my head. Don't worry about it. I kept it to myself too. Without proof, it wouldn't have been believable. So, we waited for this chance. The shock of my husband's betrayal and my own helplessness left me stunned. The drops falling at my feet were not raindrops, but my tears. Mom, you're not at fault. You're the victim here. I'll protect you, so please don't tell dad about this yet. There's one more thing we need to do. My son gently touched my shoulder and smiled. Then he took a deep breath and looked into the distance, preparing himself. We continued our daily lives as if nothing had happened. My husband still came home late and was out all day on weekends. Despite his infidelity, he acted like a gentle father at home. My resentment toward him grew, but I couldn't escalate the situation because my son had a plan. One day, my husband came home early, looking defeated at the entrance. He said that the money he withdrew on payday had been stolen. He had left his bag in a public restroom and returned to find it still there, but the money was gone. He had withdrawn a large amount due to many bills, including taxes and insurance. It was a significant loss for our household finances. The police were unlikely to recover the money. Though I wanted to blame him for his carelessness, it wouldn't help. Feeling a bit of sympathy for his shock, I decided to stay strong and composed. What happened is done. From now on, just be careful. We'll get through this month by dipping into our savings. My husband's expression softened, and he finally looked up. It seemed like the issue was resolved. Then, my son, who was supposed to be at his part-time job, burst through the front door. Enough. You are worthless cheating scumbag. Stop ruining the family by spending our precious money on another woman. My husband and I were stunned by my son's sudden appearance. Following him into the house were the blonde senior and his girlfriend, my husband's affair partner. My husband's face turned pale as he stared at them, frozen like a statue. Sweat poured down his forehead, and his complexion turned ghastly. Don't pretend you don't recognize this envelope. My son pushed an envelope with the name of the bank on it to my husband. It was the same envelope containing the large sum of cash my husband had withdrawn. The blonde senior demanded an explanation and pushed the woman toward me. She looked down, remaining silent. 
This woman is the one who stole this month's living expenses. Shocked by my son's words, I trembled as I questioned my husband. What do you mean? You said the envelope was stolen in the restroom. Wasn't it a man who took it? Why does she have it? My husband remained silent, avoiding eye contact. I was tired of living with such distrust. Determined to get to the bottom of this, I raised my voice at my husband. Explain yourself! My husband reluctantly spoke in a small voice. I'm sorry. I wanted to help her. She moved here from the countryside and lives alone. She's a student and always struggling with money. I couldn't just leave her like that, so I gave her some money to help out. The woman continued to look down, trembling. Do you think we're stupid enough to fall for that excuse? What do you mean she's struggling with money? My son's angry voice interrupted my husband's weak explanation. The blonde senior, who had been silent until now, spoke up. His words shocked me, causing me to collapse onto the floor. The woman, who lives alone in a nice apartment, is not from the countryside. She receives financial support from her parents who live nearby and lives a carefree life. She attends the same college as my son's senior and is known for her lavish spending among her friends. The senior had been working hard at his part-time job to keep up with her lifestyle. He discovered her infidelity and began to suspect her increased spending habits. When my son consulted him, they realized the timing matched with the disappearance of our money. They suspected my husband as the source of the money. My son's other goal was to find evidence of the affair. That day, the senior confronted the girlfriend with evidence of her affair. Surprisingly, she denied the affair and showed the envelope my husband had given her. She had been exploiting my husband's affection, taking money from him under various pretexts. This time, she played the damsel in distress and seduced my husband, who lost all self-control. He gave her all the cash he had, succumbing to his desires. He held her tightly on the bed while she smirked, drowning in his own pleasure. How foolish my husband was. You lied about the theft. And you stole from the drawer for living expenses, blaming Ryan for your crime. How could you do this? My husband watched as I accused Ryan, never speaking up. He prioritized helping a young woman over his own family. I felt ashamed for blaming Ryan based on my assumptions, and my disappointment in my husband grew. Suddenly, the woman raised her head defiantly. I've told you repeatedly. I took money from this man, so it's not cheating. There's no way I would entertain such a dull middle-aged man for free. Taking some money isn't a crime. The senior, appalled by her brazenness, called her out for her lack of morals. She glared at him with a defiant attitude. You should be grateful that I'm even dating a poor guy like you. No matter how hard you work at your part-time job, you will never match up to me. Have you ever thought about how miserable I feel when you always take me to cheap bars? She continued to shout, piling on the insults to the silent senior. And I'm giving this middle-aged man enjoyment worth money, so it's like a business. It's supply and demand. If you feel bad, then try to earn as much as I do. Her terrible taunts finally made my son lose his temper. He picked up his phone. You finally showed your true colors. Unfortunately for you, I recorded everything you just said. I'm calling the police to settle this. What you're doing is fraud, so be prepared for the consequences. As my son made the call, the woman and my husband stubbornly denied the fraud, claiming it was just helping someone in need. Even if it was helping, you stole money from the house and framed me for it. You deceived the family to satisfy your own desires and didn't care about me at all, did you? Cornered by my son's cold stare, 
My husband fell silent for a moment. Then he suddenly turned on the woman, screaming. You ruined my life! After everything I did to help you, you show no gratitude. What business? Don't mock me. I'm the victim here. If anyone should go to jail, it should be you. I'm completely innocent. The woman, now red-faced, began to retaliate. Don't get cocky, you dirty old man. I've been putting up with you, so of course, I deserve money. No one would willingly be with a chubby middle-aged man like you for free. What a vulgar argument. The original point was being lost. Then, perhaps realizing he couldn't win verbally, my husband clenched his fist and moved to hit her. Stop it! With my shout, my husband collapsed in the hallway. The senior had subdued him. Apparently, my senior is somewhat famous in the martial arts world. My son shrugged as he looked at me. No one could match his strength. Amidst this, the police arrived with blaring sirens. The woman was arrested for fraud, and my husband was taken in for attempted assault and questioning. While the woman slumped in defeat, my husband continued to deny his guilt and struggled. I'm not guilty. Scarlett, Ryan, say something to the police. You used our money for your affair and still don't realize your stupidity? Or are you just stubbornly trying to justify yourself? You're just indulging in a hypocritical act of helping while refusing to admit your affair. Go cool your head at the police station. My son's words finally silenced my husband. He quietly got into the police car. The police car, carrying the two of them, disappeared, and peace returned to our home. Mom, it's okay. No matter what happens, I'll be by your side. I told you, I'll protect you. Betrayal by my husband, the woman's insults, and my regret for not believing my son. All these feelings overwhelmed me with despair. Ryan, I'm sorry. Thank you. I kept repeating these words to my son, who stayed by my side. Tears flowed so much that I couldn't see his face. A month later, my divorce from my husband was finalized and my son and I started a new life together. My ex-husband, having lost his family and his money to his affair partner, stopped going to work and eventually lost his job. Unable to pay the mortgage, he sold our house and moved back to his parents' house. Living with the shame of returning home at his age, he faced constant gossip from neighbors. Unable to bear the curious stares, he became a recluse. His elderly parents couldn't care for him, leaving his room filled with trash and a terrible smell. His parents eventually called a rehabilitation facility, whose staff tried to take him out daily. But he stubbornly refused to go and continues to resist the staff. He hasn't left his room in over a month, hasn't bathed, his hair and beard are overgrown, and his teeth and nails are in terrible condition. His dirty body emitted a foul odor. He was no longer the man we once knew. On the other hand, the affair partner turned out to be even more dishonest than we had imagined. It was discovered that she had frequently stolen small amounts of cash from my son Sr.'s wallet and secretly used his credit cards. In addition to fraud, she was also charged with theft and received a prison sentence. Her parents, who had been supporting her generously, were furious to learn of her criminal actions. They refused to pay her bail or take responsibility for her. As a result, she ended up in jail. Since that incident, my son and his senior have grown even closer. Sometimes, the senior comes over, and the three of us share meals together. For him, who lives alone far from his hometown, my homemade meals are a special treat. One day, the senior heard about a job opening for an office worker at a company his friend worked for. He immediately recommended me. I quickly got the job, and our lives have been stable since then. 
Ryan, I'm so sorry for not believing you and blaming you back then. I should have listened to you and understood you. I was so confused by your sudden change that I ended up saying terrible things. I couldn't imagine how much pain my son must have felt when I accused him of stealing the living expenses. Even now, the regret overwhelms me. It's okay, mom. I'm sorry for not telling you anything and acting the way I did. I was so full of anger and hatred that I didn't know what to do either. My adolescent son had been suffering alone. Thinking about it made me feel helpless. From now on, I promised to respect his opinions and support his independence as he approached adulthood. There will be times when you need to make big decisions or need money. When that happens, don't hesitate to consult me. Okay? After all, I am your life senior. We looked at each other and laughed. Thank you, Mom. I'm always grateful for your support. The days of his childhood seem like yesterday. People often say children grow up quickly, and I truly understand what they mean. It is both sad and joyful to see my son becoming independent. One day, he will have his own family and watch his own children grow. Until then, we will continue to support each other and live our lives together. I looked at my son again. What? It's embarrassing when you stare at me like that. My son blushed with embarrassment. No, it's nothing. I silently prayed for my son's happiness to continue forever.